Dogumentary TV, producing the best breed documentaries. My name is Kathy Oaks, and I'm here today to talk about my favorite breed of dog, and those are boxers. I've only been involved with boxers for about nine years. Um, I've been involved in canines and working dogs for a little over 30 years. I started out with German Shepherds, Malinois, Rottweilers, Dobermans. Initially, um, my exposure to working dogs was through law enforcement. Um, I became a police officer in the late 80s, early 90s, um, and I started working with the canine officers. Uh, they were looking for a volunteer, you know, initially to get into a bite suit, and they wanted a woman because they thought it, you know, sometimes their dogs really didn't want to bite a female. Um, and so that was something they had requested of me. I got in the bite suit and started suiting up for many of the dogs. Um, so that's where it began. And then later from there, that became where I auditioned and uh, put in uh, to become a canine handler. Uh, currently, I'm still licensed uh, with the state of Nevada uh, for police dogs, for uh, patrol, explosives, and narcotics. Later on in life, I came across a boxer that was trained to do the same things uh, that my German Shepherds and Malinois were, and I just adored his antics, his personality, and the fact that he was capable of doing those things that I thought only my working police dogs could do. For me, it's just easier to live with a large pack of boxers uh, than it is with, say, a large pack of shepherds. The fur, it, that's a big part of it, too. Uh, I tend to be a neat freak, and I've always found boxers to be incredibly meticulously clean dogs and uh, easy to keep in a home environment, on the couch, with their antics and their behavior. They've just become my absolute favorite breed. As far as the origin of boxers, um, there's several different theories. Uh, some believe in the bullion baser. Um, from what I've been able to study and substantiate scientifically, and then also what I've been able to just see in the characteristics of the dog, I tend to lend my belief that the origin of the breed in the 1800s came from what we currently know as the old English bulldog, um, which in those days were a more streamlined dog with leg. Uh, but again, with the, with the flatter face, but not as many folds and stuff as what we currently see. And also what we know of as the Spuds McKenzie dog or the, the Bull Terrier. And I believe that a perfect boxer is a combination of these two dogs. So you have the top line, you have the tail set, you have the angulation and body type of a Bull Terrier and you have the head fixture of a combination between a bull terrier and a bulldog. That is, in my opinion, what you have in the boxer breed today that we see. I don't necessarily dispute the bullion baser. I've just not been able to scientifically back that up. Uh, some of my uh, research and study has been not from necessarily Germany, uh, where the information on the bullion baser comes from. A lot of my um, background has been from all of Eastern Europe and from England uh, and in studying them. I just have not been able to see where this mythological dog where they're digging up bones of this dog and um, to make the connection back to that, oftentimes we find in the origin of any of our breeds is a lot of mythology. Uh, when they don't know the answer, it just suddenly appeared and they create a story to go behind it. Um, so for me, um, I see in my dogs uh, the bull terrier and the bulldog. I see the prey drive, the tenacity, the antics, the energy of the terrier, and I see the aggression and the fear and the fighting ability of the bulldog. And that's what I see in my modern day boxer. 
The original working purpose of the Boxer after they were developed, I believe that they held a lot of work around the farm, around the household, uh, also for hunting um, and holding prey until the uh, hunter could dispense with them. They maybe weren't the dog that, that chased them to the field, but they were the dog that held it until the hunter arrived. Um, I believe in the beginning of World War I, they uh, carried messages behind enemy lines. Um, with the development of World War II uh, in the country of origin at this point, which was Germany, uh, all dogs had to serve a purpose. Um, otherwise, they weren't fed and they weren't cared for. Uh, there were some caretakers of the breed that felt it was really important to preserve this animal. And so uh, at that point, the dogs became uh, guard dogs and working dogs for uh, the armies. Today's modern boxer is an all around working breed. Uh, they're very biddable. They very much want to please their owners. So any situation that you put them into, they will do well. Uh, I've known many that do agility and dock diving and lure coursing and do, you know, fast cat running. Um, there is also the common practice throughout Europe. They are utilized for what a sport Schutzend, uh, IPO, or now it's renamed as IGP. Um, so it's very prevalent that the boxers are involved in Schutzen. Uh, used to be that uh, Mondio Ring and French Ring were not allowed in Germany, uh, the country of origin of the dogs. And so evidently that has recently changed. And so I believe we'll start seeing more dogs in Mondio Ring and French Ring. As far as the ability of working boxers to do law enforcement, it's actually rather common throughout Europe. Uh, you, I've seen many of them in Belgium and France, uh, Germany. So that is common, a little more accepted than here in the United States. Although I do know of some law enforcement agencies uh, in the Wisconsin, Minnesota area that are utilizing boxers on a day-to-day -day basis. They have a long history of having many boxers with those agencies there. The boxers, of course, like many other working breeds, have developed along the show lines and the working lines. Um, I don't think either one is exactly correct. I think in the best case scenario, you have a dog that meets the breed standards, that is correct confirmation wise, form and function, and also has the drive and the ability. But like many working dogs, that has indeed happened. Uh, you will find many beautiful boxers that don't have the drive and uh, in prey and aggression that they were bred to have. And you will see many working boxers that don't have the confirmation that they should have. Have. Again, the perfect scenario is to combine both of those, having a dog that has confirmation, beauty, ability to move and structure and hold up, and also the prey drive and the aggression that the dogs were created to have. In my opinion, boxers make some of the best family pets for any type of situation. Um, if you have little toddlers, Boxers have an innate ability to sense when they need to be small and they need to be gentle. I've also had families where individuals are handicapped or in wheelchairs, and again, boxers have an innate ability to pick up on that and to adapt themselves to that situation. So families with children, small children, um, teenage children, uh, families that uh, are active, of course, is wonderful. Boxers simply want to be with their people. That's one of the most driving forces behind the dog. And they will adapt to anything in order to be near their people at all times. Boxers, all in all, are very healthy in my opinion. There are some difficulties that they've encountered over the years. Oftentimes it has diverged genetically because some that have come to America and some in Europe face different health challenges. Um, one of the things, uh, my predominant experience is with the European boxers, um, and they struggle with subaortic stenosis, which is a heart condition, which can be a devastating diagnosis. However, it can be diagnosed very early, and it can be handled with medication. Um, and there is also spondylosis, which is the fusion of the spine. There is also hip dysplasia. However, a lot of those things in proper rearing and nutrition and keeping their weight uh, can be you know, mitigated as far as their effects on the dog. 
In the American boxers, a little different health challenges, similar but different. They tend to have a heart arrhythmia problem, which is ARVC. And they also tend to suffer from degenerative myopathy, which is where the spinal column uh, shrinks over time and they have difficulty utilizing uh, their rear legs. Um, so again, in any genetic pool, you tend to have these things occur. Um, we are screening in both countries to eliminate that from our breeding pool. But all in all, I would say they're a pretty healthy breed. The life expectancy, um, healthy, active lifetime um, of a boxer uh, would be probably about on average about 12 years. Uh, some of the Americans um, I've seen living 16, 17, 18 years, the American lines. Um, but I would say you're in for, you know, it takes them a little time to mature. I would say you're in for about a 10 year active, nice lifespan. They'll start slowing down a little bit after 10. Um, I have a nine-year-old that still likes to work and do things and is very, very active, um, and he'll be 10 in September. So, I believe the, it's critical and important for any puppy, um, even boxers, to have proper socialization when they're very young. Uh, boxers tend to come out of the womb as happy-go-lucky and very confident dogs and very uh, even-tempered. Uh, not reactive and confident, but if they miss that critical socialization period, you can develop a, a fearful dog. Um, it's important that they're exposed to, you know, loud sounds and they're exposed to, uh, you know, unstable as far as footing and, you know, cans and bottles and noises that they would encounter in everyday life so that they're not reactive. Um, and when it comes as well to obedience, again, this is a dog that the greatest thing that they want is to be with their family and with their people. They're very smart and they know whatever it is they need to do to be with that person is what they're going to do. We call it being biddable. Um, and boxers are very biddable, very smart, and they uh, take very well to obedience. The importance of crate training for me um, as a competitor and a person I travel to Europe with my dogs, um, it's vitally important uh, that they learn that crates are a safe place and it's a place to calm themselves. Uh, I just flew in with a puppy from Germany um, and she was probably in that crate for 16 hours. Uh, so with that, they need to understand that it's not a punishment thing. It's a very positive thing. Um, I start crate training with my puppy pups uh, at about six weeks. Um, first all together in a crate and then I separate out the litter mates and stuff. Um, and it's very important. Um, also the owners that my puppies would go to in time. Uh, it's important that if they have to work that they can leave the dog crated for the dog's safety and you know so that the dog doesn't get bored and get destructive while they're at work for you know six eight hours a day. So it's a vital vital instrument that um, helps uh, the dog just adapt to life around humans. Um, I also find the potty training is relatively easy. Uh, with boxers, they tend to want to be clean, always. Uh, they tend to be a very clean dog. Um, so as far as the potty training, that just let it develop at its natural course. Uh, crate training is a little bit, maybe a little more difficult. I usually start it with pups very young, like six weeks, um, but it, they don't want to be away from their people. Um, so oftentimes when you start crate training, they'll give you many mournful howls and uh, tell you of their dislike of it, but a, a slight little correction and stuff, and they, they understand what's required of them. Um, I have four puppies or four dogs with me uh, today. So they're very young dogs, very early on in their training um, and stuff. And so we've been working with Oscar for a little while. Um, and we're going to, you know, continue to do a little bit of protection phase training today. The first dog is female um, and her name is Iramis. And uh, she's from uh, Czech Republic and German. She's a cross of Czech and German lines. Um, so she is a working boxer um, and she is um, a very, very fierce working dog, uh, but she is probably the most gentle, loving at home 
Um, she, the switch goes off and she like melds into your body and kisses and she's just a very gentle, loving soul. Um, I have Mr. Bentley um, and he is again Czech and German uh, and he's a, a very dark boxer with some white markings on him. Uh, he's a young male and um, he is a character. Um, he, he loves to do protection work and he loves to do bite work. Uh, he's very good with obedience and he is just a goofball of my whole pack. He's the one pulling the antics. He's the one that, you know, bites the other dogs on the heel so they'll pull away from their food bowl so he can go in and get the food. Um, so he's, he's got some pretty interesting antics. Uh, then I have a uh, Spanish dog uh, from Spain that is a fawn female, and her name is Kiki. Uh, she is ancient, ancient genetically. Um, she's been pretty much uh, put in this area of Zaragoza, Spain and bred within there. So she doesn't share any of the modern pedigrees uh, of many of the common sires throughout Europe. Uh, so she's a very ancient looking dog. Um, and, and she's just an incredible young puppy. Early, this is the first training that she's ever had um, and she's doing very well. Um, and then if you want to see, I have my little boxer, my 10 week old boxer puppy, her name is Grace. And she is, I, she just flew in from Germany, so just literally got off the airplane. And, uh, you know, she's like little 20 pounds of cuteness. There is no cuter puppy than a boxer puppy, in my opinion. She has never done any bite work or anything like that, just chase a little towel and rag, but she's just adorable and so cute. As far as for me with my future with boxers, um, it's only just beginning. Um, I've spent probably the last five or six years amassing genetic bloodlines that I've studied. Uh, I believe I probably have some of the strongest and best working lines of boxers in the world. Uh, my future is indeed to begin breeding. Uh, the lines that I've amassed over the last few years um, and to continue in sport and competition. Um, I have a, a large training facility that I'm getting ready to open to the public. Uh, indoor, of course, in Nevada where it's so hot, uh, we have to have indoor facility uh, where I'll continue training my dogs and then setting up a breeding and a kennel facility uh, on a large residential property. So for me, boxers are going to be probably the rest of my life. Um, I adore the breed. Um, I believe that they're at a crucial point in their development, um, that they need someone to spearhead and to champion the breed and to preserve those wonderful things that we all fell in love with. Don't really break too easily, but I'm worth it cause I'll slip into your dreams tonight. Watch me breaking